and welcome to this week's Julie Show, a weekly roundup of all things St Julie's. Last week, over 300 of you joined the Julie Show. So, spread the word, and if you've got any ideas you would like to contribute, please get in touch with us at the 1804 Society. I hope that you're all keeping well after we got together last week, and I hope that you enjoy what we've got in store for you today. So, let's start with a quiz. Hi there and welcome to the Julie Show Quiz. Seven days, seven questions. No prizes, it's just for fun. Keep your own score and check out with your mates how they did. And watch out, there's a deliberate spelling mistake in there somewhere. Here we go. Number one. Our nearest COVID mass vaccination hub is in St Helens, but where? Number two, who was Joe Biden's vice president in the USA? Number three, who was the most streamed artist of 2020? Number four, Monday was Martin Luther King Day, but where did he give his famous I Have a Dream speech? Number five, the world's second highest mountain was climbed in winter for the first time this week. What's it called? Number six. Which company sent a satellite into space this week? Number seven. Who is going to be Miss Trunchbull in the latest film of Roald Dahl's Matilda? So, how did you do? Oh, and by the way, the spelling mistake was in question three. You spell stream like this. Bye. Hope you got loads of those right, and that you spot out the spelling mistake. Let's head up to the newsroom now to see this week's headlines. Hello, and here's a quick roundup of recent news. In Washington, D.C., Kamala Harris has become the first female vice president of the USA. She said, I may be the first to hold this office, but I won't be the last. And how about this from 22 year old poet Amanda Gorman The Hill We Climb? Our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Closer to home, the mass vaccination program for coronavirus is gathering pace with more hubs opening across the country, including at venues like sports grounds, car parks and even a cathedral. You're invited to pray for all those delivering this program. At St Julie's we've had the news that... Mr. Alderman has been named Secondary Head Teacher of the Year for the Archdiocese of Liverpool. So, big congratulations to Sir and thanks for bringing some silverware home to us. And finally, in Hong Kong, Lai Chi Wai has hit the news for climbing a skyscraper in a wheelchair. 
raising over half a million pounds for spinal cord injury charities. Before the accident that left him paralysed, he was a champion rock climber and he used his upper body strength to haul himself up 250 metres. A wonderful example of determination in the face of difficulty. That's it for now. Thanks, sir. And wow, isn't it great news about Mr. Alderman, Secondary Head Teacher of the Year? Wow, we salute you, sir. And well, last week, Liv, our very own head girl, introduced herself to you all. And we're going to continue with the series with another member of our 1804 Society. Take it away. is Head of House for Therese. This means setting a good example and representing house forms at school events. This is obviously difficult at the moment due to COVID-19. At the moment I'm currently studying A-level business, sociology and psychology. After St Julie's I hope to go on to study criminology with early childhood in Hope University and then after we three years there to go on to do PGCA in primary school teaching. I applied to be part of the 1804 Society because I thought it was the best opportunity for me and to meet new people and to be a role model towards the younger years. So my favourite place in school is probably the common room because I feel like it brings all the sixth formers together and we just always have a laugh in there. It's Honestly, it's never quiet unless you're in there on your own and it's such a good community to be in. If I was to give my 11 year old self some advice, I'd tell her to just live a life because as we know, life goes so quick and you shouldn't take anything for granted and honestly just live your best life. One thing I've missed most during lockdown is my friends and family because I used to go see them every day and to see them at all is very difficult. The things that keep me going the most when times are hard is knowing the fact that my friends are literally a FaceTime call away and if I'm ever feeling down I just pick up my phone and FaceTime them and they'll be there. And finally, my favourite quote by St Julie is probably Courageous souls are needed for the service of the good God. Bye! Thanks Sarah, nice quote from St Julie, especially as we're all having to be courageous in one way or another at this moment. We've had a very positive response to the interview with Mr Willis last week, but who's it going to be this time? Thanks for joining us today. What is your job title here at St Julie's? So my job title is Head of Level School and that means that I am responsible for everything to do with years 7, 8 and 9 but I am also a member of the safeguarding team and a science teacher, physics teacher. What did you want to be when you were growing up? I only ever wanted to be a maths teacher for some reason and then when I did my A-levels I realised that I liked science a little bit more than maths, setting fire to things, playing with magnets, messing with electricity. So I still wanted to be a teacher but I changed my focus from maths to science. Who or what inspired you to do this job? I think probably as a child all I ever played was school and always wanted to be the teacher and then when obviously was in school myself I had some fantastic teachers that I, I really wanted to be like um, yeah right the way through school some really amazing people that that really had an effect on me and inspired me to want to be like them. 
Can you tell us where you went to train, how long it took and what it involved? Yeah, so my route into teaching is a little bit different to the, the main route into teaching where people usually do a degree and then a PGCE at the end of it. Um, I qualified at a time when there was a, a national shortage of science teachers so at the end of my A-levels I was approached by an organisation called the Ogden Trust who sort of sponsored me to do my physics degree but to do my teaching qualification at the same time. So it meant that I qualified a year earlier as a teacher at 21 so I have physics degree and I have qualified teacher status. Um, and I also did the qualified teacher status for primary as well. So I am both a primary and a secondary school teacher. Um, I did all of that at John Moores um, in Liverpool and also in eight different schools, four primary schools and four secondary schools across the city. Have you had any other jobs and what were they like? Yeah, I've done a few other jobs while I was training. I worked in Toys R Us for five years from the start of my A-levels in sixth form and then right the way through me to grey. I was um, a money counter in Toys R Us, which sounds really interesting, but was extremely dull and made me realise that I didn't ever want to do that for the rest of my life. What are your passions when you're not in work? I have three very young children, so they take up a significant amount of my time, um, but I do like to get them outdoors, so we like to go walking, I like to run, I've got my eldest daughter into cycling now, so I like to, I like to do anything really that gets us out the house, gets us in, in outside doing things that, that, that are quite physical really, I like anything like that, PE really. What is your favourite band or performer? Yeah, this is a difficult question because it really depends on sort of the time of the week um, or where my headspace is at that time, which music that I will like, quite like background music that I don't have to think about, that's just on. But I also really like um, band music, it was, it was very into Oasis when I was younger um, and then really enjoy of the weekend some 90s dance music as well. Um, and again, when I'm out running or on the bike, I quite like 90s dance music as well. What's your favourite film and why? My favourite film at the moment is Tangled. Um, it will soon become my least favourite film. We hadn't watched Tangled on Disney. We watch a lot of Disney in our house and um, it was one that I was able to sit down and watch and I hadn't seen it before. So we're on our fourth viewing of Tangles. I think by the end of this week it will become the least favourite film but we've seen that one a good 20 times less than all of the other Disney films that are out there. What's your favourite hymn and why? Yeah so my favourite hymn is a hymn that they play in my church at the end of communion as you're coming back from communion and you find in your seat um, it's called This Is My Body and I really like that hymn because at the end of communion the children are taken off into children's church for a, a final little activity and I get to return to my seat on my own just to have that bit of time to myself just to think um, don't have to check on where everyone is, check if anyone's sitting next to me just on my own, my own thoughts. And finally, what is the best thing about your job at St Julia's? Definitely the girls. Um, coming into school every day and working with young people like our girls is just an absolute joy. They're fantastic, they are just amazing young people and watching them go from the year six children when they come in and they interview with us as part of the transition process and then travelling right the way through school with us and leaving us women at 18 it just it's just amazing to see the fantastic and and I, I i really really love working with them well that's it for now thanks to today's guest Thanks, Mrs. Rooney. We're going to head outside to the Peace Garden now, where Mr. Anderson has had a quick change of location. And to be honest, he doesn't look as dry as he did before.
Well, thanks, and you can see I've left the comfort of the studio and I'm outside on a very rainy day, continuing our tour of the Peace Garden. We're at the second olive tree. Now, we have olive trees in the Peace Garden from a story that goes way, way back at the time of Noah. You all know that story of how it rained and rains. In fact, it didn't just rain for 40 days, the flood lasted for over a year. Anyway, as the water started to subside, Noah sent out a raven first of all, but the raven didn't come back. Then he sent out a dove, but the dove came back with an olive branch in its mouth, indicating that the waters were indeed going down, that life was once more inhabiting the earth, and the earth was at peace. And ever since then, both doves and olives have been symbols of peace. So, our special inspirational person in building peace today is from the great continent of Africa. Naima Abiyad Idris was a Christian woman who lived in the Nuba mountain region of Sudan. As well as being a wife and a mother to six children, Naima led a women's choir which sang songs of faith and perseverance in their native language, Khalid. This was an important part of the lives of the women involved and their gathering together enabled them to give each other emotional, spiritual and practical support. Naima was known as the peace singer because she used her talents to write songs of peace and forgiveness. When rebel religious extremists overran the region, many Christians suffered persecution and sought safety elsewhere. Naima, though, chose to remain to build bridges of understanding and reconciliation with those who had hatred in their hearts. In 2014, a missile struck a village and Naima was killed. It is said that Naima could sing about peace while living in a war zone because she knew Jesus, the Prince of Peace, was always with her. That's the peace singer of Sudan who we celebrate in our peace garden at St. Julie's. Well, what a wonderful human being. And hopefully we can follow her example in seeking peace through using our God-given talents. And now it's time for Sophie's Choice. Good morning everyone, I'm back with my recommendations for this week. Firstly, my movie of the week is the 2007 Hairspray, which is a very fun, upbeat musical and it's a classic with some great actors and some great songs to sing along to. Secondly, I've got two podcast recommendations which you can find on Spotify. The first one is Get Sleepy, which is has like common stories that can help you get to sleep or just help you relax. And secondly is The Week Unwrapped, which is about three news stories from each week that went underreported and it allows you to gain some wider knowledge of what's going on in the world. And finally, for those of you who are on Instagram, my top Instagrammer of the week is Dr. Alex George, who has been working on the front line as a nurse and as a mental health advocate, who uses his platform to help others. And whilst you're there, you may as well give St. Julie's L25 a follow too. I hope these recommendations can keep you entertained through the week. Thanks, Sophie. You're making me want to go and watch Hairspray right away. Now, I don't know about you do at lunchtime these days. I really miss seeing my friends in the common room. But if you're wondering how to spend lunch breaks well, here's a few ideas from some of our Year 9 students. At lunchtime, I like to listen to music, Alexa, play a lockdown playlist, I have a playlist for however I'm feeling, and singing along releases tension. At lunchtime, I take the time to walk the dog. It's good exercise for the both of us, whatever the weather. And we get a break from being surrounded by the walls. At lunchtime, I get something to eat before settling for an episode of Strange Things. 
I feel like it's a good reward for all the work I've been doing and it really helps me chill out before settling back into learning again. I have to promise to myself just to watch one episode, otherwise I can end up on the couch all day. At lunch time I need to recharge, so I'll make a call by her me and me mom. I think being kind to people makes me feel better too. At lunchtime, I like to go on social media. Because taking a break from work is important. At lunchtime, I like to FaceTime my friends. Hi girls! Hi! It's really hard not seeing them as a girl, so it's important to stay connected. Thanks to our Year 9 students there. I hope that's given you some ideas to make your lunch breaks more enjoyable. We all know it's tough at the moment, but we will get through this. Let's take a moment in prayer with St Julie, who certainly knew what it was like to come through tough times. St Julie, our smiling saint, we ask you to be with us each day. Give us courageous hearts as we face difficult times. Help us stand tall as sunflowers as examples to others. And give us liberty of spirit as we strive to serve the good God you served so well. St Julie, pray for us, protect us and bless us. Well, I hope you have a great weekend. Don't forget to look out for each other. Today we're going to play out with a really sensational cover version of a song by Phoebe Bridges, performing Graceland 2. It's Charlotte and Tilly. Picks the dirt. 
cheeks and stare at the moon. She said she knows she'll live through it to get to this moment. A to sleep the saltines, and that's when I knew.